Be polite. Be polite. Thank you. Up a dab a dab a dab. Stop, stop, stop. I don't need that. Stop. Yeah. And as soon as he stops, the reins, you develop a little slack in the reins. Okay. So as soon as you feel him stop, just give him that tiny bit of slack. So you start getting a real fine feeling with your contact. When you're making this kind of activity, you know, I want to get that feeling first, you know, of the hind leg coming forward and that I touch it. And when he's out to the hand, you'll notice when you touch the rein, you feel it in the hind leg. He answers, he answers much more quickly than when he dips down. And then when that feeling is there, and I can sort of feel the hind legs up into my, I, we talk about feeling the hind legs in your hand. That's the feeling that you get. You, there is like a quick response to, yeah, like that, yes. Good boy. And that fine feeling, when we, when we start to push the horse for more activity, we want to re 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 maintain that fine feeling. And then as you maintain that fine feeling and you get the horse active with the hind legs and in the right balance, the roundness will start to come on its, you know, kind of as an automatic uh -huh. on its own. Uh -huh. And get the hind leg a little active. And then you can use that activity of the hind leg to, to play with the energy. That makes a lot of sense. Any, you know, if I want to do something in the hand, it has to come from the, yeah, from the back first. And then when the, all the energy comes through, then I can play with it. If, there's, if I don't push it forward, then I, and I start to play, it, you'll get behind you. That makes sense. So you always want to, and, and Hank's quote, and it's really true, if you have trouble in your hands, yeah. it means you have trouble in the hind legs.
Yeah, so you, you, you try to help him balance. You have to choose your lines that you go on and help him balance on those lines. And what's funny is when I'm riding on the track, he, whatever direction you're going, it doesn't matter. He wants to look out, you know, mm -hmm. to see what's happening. Right. And not pay attention to the rider. Yeah, and that's, you know, quite common in young horses. And then you look for a, a nice rhythm for the horse that he can manage. Because the, the thing with the young horses in the beginning is they're not strong enough to lift themselves and place themselves forward. So either they pull themselves a little bit with the front end uh -huh. or they thrust themselves with the hind legs. Uh -huh. And they, they thrust themselves long rather than stepping and lifting. So the beginning part is to encourage them to build up the strength of the hind legs so that they can carry and they can thrust themselves both up and forward. And then you want to start to get the sense that you feel your action of the hind legs into the horse's mouth. So the action or the, the, the impulsion will travel up the hind leg, across the back, down the, down the neck, and you'll feel it in your hand. And when he drops that connection, drops the back, He'll bring the head up and he'll disconnect from your contact. So we try to keep the contact even. We keep the bit centered in the horse's mouth, right and left. And then we use the leg to press the horse forward to meet that contact. And then we regulate what we have up there. We regulate that tempo to whatever the, the horse can manage at you know at their stage of training. So when you feel him start to come away from the the aids, you put your leg on a little bit. He'll start to go forward, and then you can manage that. You don't let him run faster. You don't let him go slower. But that 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 uh, energy comes up through and makes that contact. Good. And sometimes in the beginning, um, when you have a young horse that has a lot of energy, that, that's sometimes hard to manage, not because the horse is bad or because he's not doing well, it's because there's so much energy in the youngster and they don't, they can't carry themselves so much, so they push themselves along and they can get quite strong in the hand simply because of the quality of the, of the horse's movement. So the things that you want to do, you want to sort of make sure that the horse has his ABCs. That's go when you say go, stop when you say stop, and turn when you say turn. So <clears throat> you've done you know, the uh, feeling of the contact forward. With that feeling, you want to ask the horse to stop. When I ask the horse to, to stop and I close my fist on the, on the reins, if the horse dips down and falls behind me, then I've lost the hind leg. So I want to ask the horse to stop gently, whoop, whoop, just gently. And I should feel him start, you know, if his nose starts dipping down, then I, my contact is a little too hard for it. Yeah, like that. And then you walk forward. 
So you want him to sort of keep his nose forward and into your hand. Okay. So that so. feeling that he's forward and into your hand is going to be important. And you'll get him rounder and more down, but you just want him to do it forward and into your hand. Good. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I do. So and if, and you, and if he's... Harder yeah, yeah, if he doesn't stop and he pull harder, his nose, will, his nose will dip back, he'll go down and he'll fall more to the okay. forehand. So I don't want to go to that point with the way I use my contact. I just want to try to, I, and I expect that the horse stops on a light rein. And when I expect it, I'm going to ride to that end. If I think he's going to be hard and I ride the harder eight, I'll always be harder. Like right there, you see how he wanted to go a little back, so then immediately I soften the rein, and then I touch him again. So, yeah, to, uh, to, get his, to keep his nose full out to your hand. Because you'll notice when he starts dropping two down and goes behind you, you lose that same feeling of when I touch the rein, I feel it in the hind leg. So just go to ask him to stop again. So it's just a light, just touch and soft, 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 touch and soft. Good, and then go on. And you can, you can come all the way back to the halt if you need to or want to. Until he's, that, that you're developing this real sensitivity, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To that, to that answer of, of your reign. Yeah. And do it right, do it left. feel more alive with him Absolutely. and he's he's relaxing his neck and he's stretching down without just dropping behind the aids dropping his nose behind the vertical and we call that getting behind the leg or falling behind the vertical because we need to feel that action of the hind leg to the bit and then as you're going you can regulate it just with the smallest like Little touch, small little touch. 
so that as you're going, you can regulate that tempo faster or slower, whatever you need, just very, with the most gentle of feelings. So carefully your rein doesn't get too loose and bouncy. So it has, you have a little bit of connection there. But the rein doesn't dangle, because then it makes a little snatch. So it's just a gentle but elastic connection to the mouth. Good. There his nose is nice forward. Now you test it. Good. Exactly. And then, you know, go to the other side again. Here, and you want to keep him level and balanced. And as we go more and more, the teeter-totter, so that he'll feel more like he's uphill. And the strength of the bending of the hind leg. But right at that moment, when he tips over the front, the weight travels too much to the front. He curls his nose back and falls onto the forehand. So with all the pulling in the world, all the weight is in the hand and he's just going to curl up more and more. So you have to push him back forward to get that front back out, rebalance and make that transition again. And it always is kind of this way, like a teeter-totter. Some, and some horses are more down in front and some horses have a more balanced. This horse has a better balance to the hind leg. In fact, he's a little more down in front. But it doesn't matter. It's, you have to ride them the same anyway. One just happens to come out a little easier than the other. Well, he's high in the back. Yeah, he's a little bit higher in the back. such a good boy. I like this horse a lot. I mean, he is really nice guy. I loved his father, and like, I love him. No problem. No problem, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And he's chestnut. Practically all the horses are barn are gray or chestnut. We used to have a lot of bays and blacks, but they're disappearing from our... Suddenly we've gone chestnut. Suddenly we've gone chestnut, yeah. It used to be the bay horse troop, and then it was the black horse troop. Now it's the chestnut horse troop. Thanks, and I don't like chestnuts, and, and now I've got three. <laughs> and then that feeling you want to try to keep between, you know, and you know how the quick step and all that feeling, that all, when you add that in, that transition, not letting him drop and everything, but keeping him until he finds his balance. That finding of the balance is what makes them come, you know, more round looking. But with this connection, with this little connection, when he drops on the forehand, the only thing you can do is push the horse back forward again, you know, to get the nose back up. So just follows the, the thing, you know, trouble in front means trouble behind. And then come closer to a more collected trot and try to keep that fine feeling in your hand. Keep the hind leg active so it keeps that rhythm. So you have to ride your rhythm because you can feel how he wants to kind of push himself along. And so he has a kind of a one speed kind of guy. That's right. So yeah, exactly. That's right. Good. Good. And this is the harder thing for him to do right here than going faster. Going faster is actually pretty easy for the horses. 
So you find your rhythm. So make it posting if you have to, to keep that rhythm. And then keep that feeling out to your hand. That elastic feeling, that's better. And then in that feeling, yeah, and you can feel when, you, when the more pressure comes on the hind leg, you feel how he wants to canter off. Because for him, canter is a good gait. So you could, you know, this horse, I remember that first day they cantered him, he cantered around 100 by 200 ring, all the way around. Like he'd been, you know, five years old. Amazing. But that's the quality within this horse. Good. And this is a much better feeling in your contact. And he'll get more as as he's able. Yeah, you've got to ride into that sensation. And uh, he will become rounder as the strength of the hind leg develops. And anywhere. You need to direct it. And you keep him centered in the middle. Yeah, like there's a good feeling when you contact. Yeah. It's a nice answer. You feel, yeah, and, and right there, you could even take the rein back. You could feel it because he was right there. And in the rein back, we don't want him, you know, a lot of people pull the horses back. When they pull the horses back, they curl the neck up. The horse backs up and he backs up and he drags the front feet back. What we want, we want the horse to stay out in the hand and we want him to step back with each foot. We want him to pick up and step back, not drag back. So, you're know, pulling back to close your leg, and then you don't allow him to walk forward. And then when he takes that step back, then you relax and you quit pushing, and you push again for the next step. You know, pull, you push. Yeah, and then you're soft, take your leg off. When he takes that step back, you take your leg off. When you want another step, you close your leg. He'll start to walk forward. Your hand says, no, yeah, now you're soft. And see, there he stays out into the bit, yeah. Close your leg, then you take your leg off and close your leg again. Good. Yeah. Then you walk, yeah. Good. Then you walk forward. Because it's very tempting to pull to make the horse go back. But then again, it, it's the same concept in the back as we have in the forward. You want him out in the hand. You've got to keep him straight and balanced in the front. Outside leg and rein as you turn. Yeah, so he doesn't lose his balance. Yes, yeah. and you can, there he starts to lose the balance. You feel it? Yeah. And then, so right there, you need a little more outside rein and outside leg. And I always know when I've got him because I can feel. I touch the rein, I feel the hind leg answer. You know what I'm saying? If I should touch, like right here, if you should touch the rein a bit. You should feel him answer in the hind leg immediately. Feel that? That's a good feeling. That's a feeling you want to have. Now you feel the connection between the hind legs and your contact. And then it gets really refined and quite soft. You know what I'm saying? that you want him to connect to it, yeah, and answer the way. And then we look for that reaching out to the hand. So when he reaches out to the hand, the, also the thing that he'll do is 
he'll lift the back slightly. So for the rider, that connection between the hind leg and the hand, when the horse reaches for the hand, the horse's back will rise slightly up as the hind leg comes under. And you almost get the sense of being lifted in the saddle the slightest mount. If you're very sensitive, you don't clamp anywhere, you stay nice upright, you get that sensation of the contact between the hind leg and the hand, you feel the saddle underneath you. When the horse is up, when the horse pulls his head up and gets behind, you feel the saddle drop. When the hind leg starts to work and he starts to relax down, you feel the saddle lift. So not only will he be soft in the contact, but he'll also you'll find the back, the connection, the bridge coming. The bridge between the hind legs and the mouth. And that's where that quick step feeling is. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. You put the leg on, the hind leg starts to act. You get this sensitivity in the contact where he doesn't drop down. Feel the horse reach for the hand. You have to do it in all gates. So right there, you press, but you don't let yeah. There comes the, the, the reaching a little bit. Now he's almost too fast. So you make a little contact, a little half off. But you keep pressing him forward. To make the bridge. Like that. There's a better bridge. You feel it? Mm -hmm. Then it's more work for him. Yeah, more work for him. He's saying it's yeah. a lot of work. Yeah, because the, the fast part, even though we know that in the end, you know, the speed is very important in the Icelandic course, but before that time, we want to develop strength of carrying so that we can make as much speed as we want. We can actually even get more speed because we've developed a stronger um, contact, a stronger bridge between the hind leg and the hand. So becomes um, uh, more powerful uh, rather than just flat running. You become very powerful with a lot of ground cover because Lois can not only push himself forward, but he can lift himself slightly in the air. Yeah, that's good, like that. And when he starts to, to drop his back and come up, that's when you, you keep that same lovely feeling we talked about when you put your leg on. Get him to reach for the hand, and you keep that same lovely feeling in your hand as you do it. And then you mind your tempo, you make a tempo that you like. It's your tempo where he can lift, you know, where he can do it. And as, as he makes that connection between the hind leg and back, lifting his, you know, hind leg and hand, lifting his back, as he gets it, you can make it bigger and more and bigger and more and faster. But you have to start with the smaller pieces and get the whole concept together and then as that develops you can put more and more power to it. Good. Exactly. It starts to come up and away, breaks that bridge, put your leg on. And you might try to break the bridge by going too much down. And those are all the pla hiding places for the horse to come up here, come down there. Yeah. So put your leg on, but when you put your leg on, then you control that tempo so it doesn't run fast. You make, and then you do it with that soft little feeling. So you're saying, yeah, there you go. Exactly. Exactly. Super. Super. Good. There's a better connection. You feel it? Yep. And you develop that feeling when he comes away. And of course, he's, you know, he drops down like that. And you can't necessarily pull him up, a little more light. So there'll be, there'll be, a, you know, there'll be hiding places above and below. Keeping him right at that exact place is, is, is the tough part of it. That's why it takes so long. Same thing in the tolt. Doesn't matter if you're walk trotting, cantering, tolting. The same feeling, that sensitive feeling.
stick, get a little more active. That's right. Carefully that you don't crank the neck too much to the left. Get him a little straighter, use your right leg a little bit more. Yeah, so you need a little more pressure for Can you feel how he's skidding around yes. in the toe? Yes. yes. And that's because he's losing his balance through that outside. And you can't you can't find it by pulling him back to the left. You have to Counterflex him slightly and put your right leg on so that he doesn't lose the balance in the front feet. And right leg a little more up, helping the shoulder. Not too much back with your right leg in, in, that, in that correction. That's right. Then off the wall. And you can feel when he loses his balance, goes on the forehand, it's hard even to turn. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so even start to turn now. Turn the shoulder, right leg up near the shoulder. That, that's right, almost straight, like you're going to ride right down the aisle of the barn. <laughs> you might do that. Yeah. But I mean, that's the feeling you want to get? Yeah. So that you really get him balanced and straight on the short side. that right side. Good, then you turn, toll towards A. 
Circles to the left at A. Circle left here. And then when you get to the wall over there, make a circle right. So right there, circle right. And then right there, circle right. That's all right. And that'll be the harder circle. exercise like this, you break up that straight line where it just starts hanging. There's no walls. You have to keep him straight. You can make a turn right. He can relax in the turn left because that's what he wants to do anyway. Go straight again. Turn. You can do that in both directions so it gets you a little free of the wall. Then he has to rely on you and, and, and your balance so then he's not just sort of starting to brace and he just goes around with the with a brace. There's no moment that he can really do that. Because you're turning and you're going straight and you're turning, going the other way, go straight. That was good. He's exhausted. He should be. <laughs> he should be exhausted. It's hot and he's young. He's just, but, I'm he's just, but I am really cute. You are really, really cute. He's a pretty boy. It's a nice horse. He's a very nice horse. It's a very nice horse. Yeah. I like this horse a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is a great horse. I liked you from the first time you came to the farm. I was like, oh man, that's a good one. That's a keeper. <laughs> but really watch that connection. Uh huh. I get it. That's really, really important. Yeah, more than the roundness. They get that connection. Forget the roundness. The Don't roundness will come if the I connection comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when he's he then. Out into the, he has to he's got to be out here because if you get him too round, you'll get him too buried. Mm -hmm. You know, and so the roundness has to come from this feeling between the two. That was awesome, Troy. Really good. 